Hello, welcome to my channel. If you're new, my name is Caitlin. If you're returning, welcome back. This is the second video in a series I'm naming How She Did It. And the goal of the series is to share female leaders in business, their career story, where they were at 25. I think it's incredibly inspiring. Also, it's very honest because I think we often have a movie highlight reel of success and it's not that case at all. It can be a very confusing, curious time. So, Glossier is a five-year-old company worth 1.2 billion with 200 employees and described by Emily Weiss, the founder and CEO, they are a technology company whose medium is beauty. Emily is and isn't the face of Glossier, which I think is really interesting after watching countless video interviews, listening to podcasts, reading cover stories, all featuring Emily herself. I can tell you the story from start to finish of Glossier, no problem. Yet I know comparatively very little of Emily herself, which feels intentional. I think she sees herself and Glossier far more as a Nike or a Apple than a Bobbi Brown or a Laura Mercier. What I can tell you about Emily is her story as it relates to Glossier, which is what she's chosen to tell. Emily grew up in Wilton, Connecticut, which is a suburb of about 20,000 people an hour and a half outside of New York. It's kind of picture perfect if you Google it. And at 15, she was babysitting for a neighbor. That neighbor happened to work at Ralph Lauren and she said, how do I stop babysitting your kid and intern at Ralph Lauren in New York? And at 15, to seriously ask this question, I think it shows just how much confidence Emily had, which is remarkable. And he much, must have sent something special to Emily as well because he did get her an internship at only 15 which Emily says likely would not be legal today, which is true. So she interned there for two years, two summers. And actually after high school, Emily went to NYU to study studio art. While she was there, she interned at Teen Vogue, which is largely thanks to all the hard work she put in with Ralph Lauren, because a senior design director at that time called the editor in chief of Teen Vogue and said, look, I've never done this. I have this girl, you have to meet her. After graduation at NYU, Emily had a series of assistant jobs at Condé Nast, and which is you know a global brand above many many magazines and her first was at a fashion closet at w magazine where she was assisting a stylist on contract with vogue and while assisting her she was on a shoot in miami and emily happened to meet a model who recommended to her an amazing self-tanner emily went out and bought the self-tanner she used the self-tanner she loved it and she went back to new york and even though she was working in fashion she asked the beauty editor can i write an article in vogue about this self-tanner and I don't think for Emily, she's too smart that this was really about the self-tanner. I think this was about how Emily was sensing the beauty industry was changing and how it was no longer this massive beauty conglomerate type companies telling people how they should be buying makeup, what kind of products they should be buying, but it was happening peer to peer and friend to friend and in a much more emotional decision-making kind of way than any other type of industry. So. Vogue, unsurprisingly, did publish um, the article that Emily wrote. A few weeks later, she was on vacation with her family and she explained that she planned to launch a blog, Into the Gloss. So Into the Gloss was a different take on beauty at this time. I have my notes here if you're wondering what I'm looking at. And this was gonna be a place where women could showcase their beauty routines to its readers and an era of personal style blogs, Emily thought, why doesn't this exist for beauty? Undoubtedly an expert storyteller, it's clear to see why Emily saw herself originally as an editor in chief. Into the Gloss first post featured Nikki Dean, who Emily thought simply had great hair and style. It was a single photo and a paragraph written by Emily about six products that Nikki happened to like, and that was that. Eva Chen, who I featured in my first How She Did It video, recalls meeting a young Emily when she was a beauty editor at Vogue, and this is what she says about Emily. She had that X factor. She was a college student who clearly had a plan so pulled together and focused, which was so different for me at that age. So if you wanna learn more about Eva's career, which was is just as fascinating as Emily, then I'll leave that video linked down below. Emily recalls hearing a lot of no's to be featured on the blog, Into the Glass, about 80% of the time. So no doubt her time at Vogue gave her some great connections in fashion and beauty. And within that first year, she ran her first ad with Lancome. She charged $5,000. She had no basis for this. She admits she doesn't have an MBA. She went to art school 
but she had the confidence to fake it until she made it. So in it, the gloss was taking too much time and she left Vogue, she simply couldn't do both. So she felt like in her first year, she had worked with major brands and she realized the disconnect between what brands were building and what customers wanted. And she thought she could be the next wave of voice in beauty and that women themselves could be that. So in 2013, three years after she found it into the gloss, Emily decided to launch Glossier. Emily decided on precisely nothing that she would need a million dollars to do this and went out and started pitching to venture capitalists, which is rare and incredible considering she had an art degree, yet had the confidence and the belief in her idea and this vision to do so. So she heard no's from 13 or 14 investors and eventually she met Kristen Green who gave Emily her first yes. Kristen Green has had a really incredible investment portfolio. She's invested in companies like Away, like Warby Parker, and she says this about meeting um, Emily. I see a lot of beauty lines that are beautiful, but we're, we're really looking at someone to look at things holistically from a unique viewpoint. And Emily was pitching a multi-layered vision. This was her storytelling again. She wasn't out there pitching Glossier. She was really thinking differently and I thought, I just have to work with this person. Today, Glossier's board of investors are 50% women, which is incredible considering only 6% of venture capitalists are women in America currently. Imagine how many amazing companies are gonna get built when 50% of venture capitalists are women. Emily's first hire was a director of product development at Mac to build these products. So, they found a chemist two to three months of shipping samples back and forth and they were off to the races. In 2014, they had four products and they sold exclusively online. Cleverly, these products would do very well online. A cleanser, priming moisturizer, lip balm, and misting spray, not really items you feel like you need to swatch in store. And today, Glossier has 40 products total, including a second beauty line, Glossier Play, which is a colorful makeup brand. Glossier also offers in-person shopping in two stores, one in LA and one in New York, and they've done over the past two years a handful of pop-ups in the US, including one in London. And there has been over half a billion impressions worldwide at these stores. Glossier now has its sights on accomplishing Into the Gloss's original mission, connecting women through beauty, but on a much larger scale. If you noticed Emily defining her company almost curiously as a tech company, when you hear her vision of the next stages of Glossier and actually what the last round of funding was for, which is to create a platform that changes the way online beauty shopping is done. She's since picked up massive, massive players in the tech world. So two former Instagram employees, one a digital product designer and one who designed the DM and camera feature for Instagram, as well as the VP of sales and marketing from Amazon. So with Emily's grit and vision, it seems inevitable that Glossier is going to launch a product, a digital product that will reinvent the shopping experience of beauty online. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing about her story. I enjoyed researching her. She is a mystery, yet a goddess. If you enjoyed this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments any female entrepreneurs or business leaders that you're excited to know more about. Let me know what part of Emily's story you find most inspiring and I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you.